Hey everyone, Darren here with Renaissance Coders, and today we're going to be continuing our RTS camera script. Now in the last tutorial, if you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. I'll provide a link to it in this video. But in the last video, we went ahead and we defined the skeleton of our camera script, uh, defined the, some of the settings, and we outlined the functions that we're going to be requiring to get our RTS camera behaving the way we want. Alright, so in this tutorial I'm not going to be explaining any of these settings. I did that in the last one. Uh, instead we're going to be filling in these functions and I guess we'll just do it from a top-down uh, approach. So we'll start with, with the start event function and work our way down with filling in these uh, functions. Alright, now our, initializ our initialization code is going to be uh, pretty short. We're just going to be uh, initializing our input variables to zero. So pan input will be equal to zero, orbit input will be equal to zero. This is just a habit I've gotten into. Um, I like to initialize all my variables. Alright, so we initialize our stuff there. Now, get input, we're going to be setting these input values. So pan input is going to be equal to input dot get axis, and we're going to be passing the string that we set from our input class. Uh, and so for panning, we're going to set that to our pan input. Orbit input is going to be equal to input dot get axis and get access is how we access how we access the um, the input manager that we talked about uh, briefly in the last tutorial so we're going to be using get access input for our orbit we'll call orbit.y I think you guys get the idea here it's pretty straightforward zoom inputs going to be equal to input dot get access input dot zoom now while we're in the get input function, I want to go ahead and set our mouse position uh, vector threes, since these are also going to be uh, responding to our mouse input. So we're going to set previous mouse pause to current mouse pause, and we're going to set current mouse pause to input dot mouse position. So what these two lines of code handle are, uh, it handles holding our previous mouse position from the last frame and our current mouse position for the, the current frame. All right, now our update event function is just going to be calling uh, a lot of the methods that we've already defined. So the first thing we do is update input, so we'll call get input. Then for zooming, the first thing we want to do is check to see if we allow zooming. So if position dot allow zoom, then we're going to call our zoom method. For rotating, we're going to do a similar thing. We're going to say if orbit dot allow y orbit, then we're going to call rotate. And then for panning, we're going to call pan world. Now in our fixed update, we're going to be calling just one method, handle camera distance. Okay, so let's talk about pan world. How are we going to pull this off? The first thing we want to do is define a target position that we're going to try to pan our uh, target to. So we'll say vector three, target pause. We're going to initialize it to target uh, to our transform dot position. All right, once we've done that, we're going to check to see if we are inverting our pan direction. So we'll say if position.invertPan, then we're going to set pan direction equal to negative 1. Else, so if we're not inverting our pan direction, we're just going to set pan direction equal to 1. Okay, so we've handled our pan direction. Now we want, what we want to do is check to see if we are uh, pressing the pan input. So if pan input is greater than zero, then we're pressing our mouse button to handle panning. Now what we're going to do is set our target position. So target pause is going to be equal to, so we're going to say plus equal transform dot right times current mouse position dot x minus previous mouse position dot x. Okay, so what we're doing is we're just adding, uh, let me go ahead and finish this line of code. So we're going to multiply all of this times position dot pan smooth position.pansmooth times pan direction, so the direction that we want to go in, times our time.delta time timer. Okay, so what we're doing here is we are adding to our target position, um, we're adding, we're basically modifying the x component of our target position by multiplying uh, transform.right. So transform.right is our x component, and we're multiplying that by current mouse position dot x minus previous mouse position dot x. Okay, so this is really ultimately going to be determining what direction we're moving in. So what direction is our mouse telling our camera to pan in? Then we're going to multiply that by the speed that we want to pan in, 
and we're going to multiply this by our pan direction. So do we want to invert the direction that we're moving? If so, uh, this will be 1 or negative 1, depending on whether we're inverting or not. And then we're going to multiply everything times time by delta time because we are updating in our update event function. And so we need to make sure our uh, update cycles remain steady regardless of the frame rate. Okay, so that's handling our X component. We also want to handle our Z component. So what we're going to do to pull this off is whenever, since we have the ability to rotate our camera, so remember we have the ability to orbit our camera on the Y axis, and that's going to change our local coordinate system. So what we have to do to handle the forward uh, transformation is use the cross product, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So we're going to say target pause plus equal vector3 dot cross. We're going to pass transform dot right and transform <clears throat> and uh, vector3 dot up. Okay, so transform dot right, vector3 dot up. The cross of that is going to give us our local forward vector. Okay, so let me reiterate the problem that we're going to have. So here we modify the x component of our target position. So you might be wondering, if, we're mod if we want to modify the z component, why don't we just do the same thing, but instead of using dot right, we use dot forward. And the problem with that is, again, if we, if we orbit our camera, so if we rotate on the y-axis, our forward vector is changed, but by saying transform.forward, we're going to get some unexpected results, and our camera isn't going to be moving in the direction forward that we want it to be. So again, we have to derive from the cross product our local forward axis. Uh, and so the way we do that is we cross our transform.right, our x uh, vector, and the global vector 3.up vector. And that's going to give us our local forward vector. So after we make that cross, um, after we make that, that cross calculation, we're going to multiply it by current mouse position dot y minus previous mouse position dot y. And we're going to be doing the same thing on the rest of this line of code. We're going to be multiplying it by position dot pan smooth times pan direction times time dot delta time. Okay, so again, the only difference between these two lines of code is that we're modifying a different axis. We use transform dot right to modify the x component here, and we have to derive our own forward axis by using the cross product here. Okay, so once we've done that, we can set our target pause uh, to our transform.position. Now you have the option here to do some uh, lerping calculations. However, for me, I wanted to just uh, to lock it in to the target position. So again, if you wanted to, you could lerp to you could lerp your transform.position to the target position, and that would uh, essentially give you some. Uh, it'll it'll make the camera feel like it's dragging behind your mouse input but if you guys want to do that then use alert function or smooth damp function uh, but I wanted to keep it locked in so I go ahead and just say transform.position equal target pause alright and that's going to complete our panning function so we're done with that now we have to talk about our handle camera distance now here we're going to be using some physics.raycasting so let's go ahead and talk about what it is that we what we want to achieve here we're going to be casting a ray from our camera's position to the ground. Uh, actually, we're just going to be passing it f on the direction of our camera's forward vector. So that's going to be inevitably facing the ground. And so this physics ray cast is going to have a distance. And we want to make sure that distance remains the same, uh, regardless of whatever terrain we go over. All right, so the first thing we want to do is define a ray. So ray, ray is equal to a new ray. It's a lot of rays. Okay, so equal to new ray, and we would need to give it a uh, we need to give it a transform dot position and our direction. So we need to give it a an origin and a direction. Our origin is our is our camera's position. Our direction is going to be our transform's forward vector. So transform dot forward. Then we need to have some hit info because remember we need to know how uh, how long this ray's distance is. So our hit info is going to give us that. So we need to have a ray cast hit, call it hit, and then what we're going to do is call if physics if physics dot raycast. We're going to pass ray. Then we're going to pass out hit. We're going to pass a distance, so a max distance that this ray is going to be. 
So we'll set that to 100. And then our layer that we're trying to hit. So we're passing ground layer here. Remember, uh, up at the top, we defined a setting for our layer mask. We defined this setting up here. And that's going to be determining uh, what our ground is and what we need to maintain our distance from. So we're maintaining our distance from this ground layer. Okay, so at this point, if this uh, if physics.raycast returns true, we're going to enter this if statement and perform some calculations. Otherwise, we'll just skip over this and not do anything. Um, but inevitably, the nature of this camera, we're always going to be entering this if statement because we're always looking at the ground. All right, so if we uh, if we hit the ground, we are, we are going to out hit, so we're going to return some hit information. And so what we want to do here is first set our destination. So we're going to say destination is equal to vector three dot normalize transform dot position minus hit dot point, and we're going to multiply this by position dot distance from ground. Okay, so what we've done is we have told it um, the distance. Basically, we get the distance by saying transform dot position minus hit dot point and multiplying it by the distance from ground. This is going to be what maintains our distance from the ground, uh, regardless of how hilly our terrain is. So we have our destination. Now what we want to do is set our destination to be um, to be an extension of hit dot point. So our hit dot point is going to be where in space, uh, where on the ground did our raycast hit, and we want to add our destination to that hit dot point. So we're going to say destination plus equal hit dot point. That's going to add this. Essentially, what it's doing is it's adding distance from ground to uh, the place that we hit on the ground. Okay. So we have our destination set now. Now what we need to do is say uh, transform dot position and we're going to smooth to our destination so we're going to say equal vector 3 dot smooth damp we're going to pass our current so our current is transform dot position our target is going to be destination we're going to reference our camera velocity so in the last tutorial we defined this camvel which is going to be our camera's velocity uh, we need to pass that to this function and then our smooth time is going to be how fast we want to move to this new distance and so what we're going to pass here is a hard-coded value that I thought was good you can change this if you want to uh, but 0.3f seems to work pretty well alright and that's all we need to do for our handle camera distance so now with this function no matter uh, no matter what kind of terrain we have our our camera is going to be uh, moving um, is going to be maintaining its distance that we that we set in our settings from that ground regardless again of how hilly um, it is okay so now we want to define our zoom and then our rotate and then we'll be done okay so our zoom function the first thing we want to do is modify our new distance variable so we're going to say position dot new distance and remember this new distance is going to be what our new zoom is going to be we're going to be modifying the distance from ground variable ultimately within this method. So position dot new distance plus equal position dot zoom step times uh, negative zoom input. Okay, so the reason we need to multiply zoom input is because it's going our zoom input is going to be telling us uh, whether or not we're zooming in or out. So if our zoom input is negative, then we're going to be uh, zooming uh, out, and if it's positive, we're going to be zooming in closer to our scene. All right, so we have our new distance. Now all we need to do is lerp to that new distance. So position dot distance from ground equals mathf dot lerp. Position dot distance from ground is our current. Our target is our position dot new distance, and the speed at which we want to move to and from our our or yeah to and from our current to our target is going to be our position dot zoom smooth times time dot delta time. So that's how fast we want to move from our distance to ground to our new distance. Alright, so we have our position, we have our distance from ground, but we need to make sure that our zoom is maintained within the threshold that we defined in our setting. So remember we have a min zoom and a max zoom, and we want to make sure that our distance doesn't go without those uh, doesn't go 
um, outside of those bounds. So what we're going to say is if position dot distance from ground is less than position dot max zoom. So remember, max zoom is our smaller value. That's going to be um, determining how close we are to our target. And if position dot distance from ground is greater than position dot min zoom. All right. So if it's if it's less than our max zoom, then we're going to be setting our distance from ground to our max zoom. But we also want to make sure we don't forget to set our new distance. If we don't set our new distance to max zoom within this if statement, then our new distance is going to be um, sort of lost, and it will seem like our zooming function isn't working. So again, we need to set our distance from ground to position dot max zoom, and we also need to set our we also need to set our new distance to position dot max zoom. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste these two lines of code. The only difference here in the second if statement is we're going to be setting it to our min zoom. All right, and that's going to complete our zooming function. Now let's talk about our rotate function. The rotate function is really simple. The first thing we want to do is check to see if we are getting any orbiting input. So if orbit input is greater than zero, that means that we're pressing our orbit key. And then all we're going to, to do is modify our y rotation. So orbit dot y rotation. Okay, orbit dot y rotation plus equal current mouse pause dot x minus previous mouse pause dot x times orbit dot y smooth. Orbit dot y orbit smooth. And since this is being called inside update, we want to uh, multiply this by time by delta time. Okay, now since we have our since we've modified our orbit.y rotation, we need to use that that value to set a new transform.rotation. So nothing happens until our transform rotation is modified. So we need to say transform.rotation equals quaternion dot Euler orbit dot x rotation orbit dot y rotation and zero. Okay? So we also have the y rotation which uh, uh, is getting modified. We also have the x rotation which isn't getting modified. It is uh, it's set at start time whenever the the camera starts up. Okay, so if everything if we did everything right, then we should be able to hook this camera script up to our camera, and we should be able to um, watch it work. Okay, so let's go ahead and drag this into our camera. So we're going to click on our camera here. And we're going to drag our RTS camera onto it. Okay, so if we extend this, if we open this up, we should see all of our settings in here. Everything looks pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and run it to see if it works. Okay, so I'm going to select my RTS camera. Okay, so it looks like I can pan and my pan is inverted so I'm moving my mouse up but my camera is moving down and I'm moving my mouse to the right but my camera is moving left and it looks like it's adjusting the distance based on the height of the terrain that I'm looking at I can rotate but it's going a little bit slow right now so let me go ahead and modify my my rotation uh, speed okay so my y orbit smooth let's change this to something like 10 and then we'll try this again. So the problem I was having was my rotation was really slow. So now my rotation is a little bit faster. I can rotate around. I move on my camera's local coordinate system. Okay, so no matter which way I'm rotated, I'm actually moving on the correct forward axis. And that is it, guys. That is going to wrap up our RTS camera script. If you guys have any troubles, feel free to ask in the comment section below. But as always, thanks for watching. This has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.